Welcome, friends, to Smoke Em If You Got Em. This is a very simple podcast. The instructions are... First, find this album, International Harvester, by... The name of the album is Soft Got Rosemary. And, and that's, and that's yes. a complicated one. Can you, can you uh, go ahead and spell it, please? Name? Spell it. There's no way you can spell it. You're out of your mind. <laughs> International Harvester, <laughs> Soft Got Rosemary, okay? Name of the band, International Harvester, name of the album, Soft Got Rosemary. Now, after you do that, uh, and find your smartest friend if you need help with that, folks. After you do that, you're going to go smoke a joint, and you listen to the first half of this album. Then, you're going to smoke another joint, and listen to the other half of the album. Now you say, well, I don't usually smoke two joints. Well then, live a little, okay? We're, <laughs> we're trying to go to the same place here. We're, we're, we're doing... Get life, folks. We're, doing, we're doing this okay, old school. We're going side A, we're going side B. Yeah. After you do that, the next step is to come back to us, and we are going to have a friendly discussion about the music... And the journey we all went on together. It's going to be so, smelly. In the meantime, here uh, we go, folks. And we're back. And we're back. Yep. Yes, we are. That was uh, side what you, A. What do you think of uh, this album, International Harvester? I think um, I think this album uh, is a really fucking great. Uh, definition of what progressive rock should be and avant-garde should be. My initial reaction to the side A of this, it's uh, it's kind of uh, it's it's music to score a war to, you know. It's uh it's Velvet Underground at the deepest level of trash and uh, in a, in the most positive way. I mean that in the most positive way. I've never heard anything like this, and uh, and I I loved it. Now you said something very intelligent. That's why you're uh, my partner in this podcast. That's the part you that takes the longest, right? You, you said you remind me of the Velvets. Yeah. Okay. And and the Velvets, the first album is '67, and uh, tomorrow, folks, a little bonus. We're gonna, me and G are gonna basically show you how uh, the first Velvets album is so much better than Sgt. Pepper's. Oh. Oh, yeah, shots fired. Shots fired. It's, it's the okay. truth. It's the truth, folks. This is folks. not your daddy's prog rock show. Not at all. Okay? Now, Velvet's first album is the only thing at all that I can, like, semi-relate this album to. But it really is influenced by, it's definitely not a rip-off. It's different. It, it, you know, I would say the, 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 the connecting issue between both these bands is they knew the power of the drone. Yeah. Okay, and folks, we're going to learn together to learn to embrace the drone. You got to embrace the drone. That's how I always thought, uh, I always think about uh, riding the snake. Embrace the drone. It's your friend. So, I don't know if you know this. Um, now, you think, why do the Velvets, how do they have that drone? Like, why do they understand that? Well, obviously, people know John Cale the influence of Lamont Young. Yeah. And well, guess what, folks? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. International Harvester, Terry Riley. There you go. The hippest, hippest man still alive. Still alive, still uh, touring. Well, when we had tours. When we had tours. Uh, <laughs> Let's stay positive. Basically, he was going, yeah, it's going to come back, folks. We're fine. It's going to come back. Uh, he was in Sweden teaching at a school and he, he needed guys to perform in C. This is 1966 yeah. era, 67, okay? Early on. And the guys that he uh, found to perform in C with are the guys who are made up of International Harvester. Yeah. It, uh, it's important oh, to uh, note, it's, it's important to note though that uh, <clears throat> this, this album only happens once. It's a solo album. It, it stands on its own. And uh, the influences are very obvious. Terry Riley, if you don't know Terry Riley, I'm sure at some point we're going to go through some Terry Riley. But Terry Riley uh, defines an era of sound that nobody has uh, gotten to or to that certain level. And drones are very important. Drones talk to you in a different way. Drones move you. And drones are frequencies. And these, these guys in the studio, all they did was play with the frequencies. 
If you don't feel this album, A, you haven't smoked enough, and B, you haven't paid enough attention. Let me tell you something. If you don't like a drone, you have problems with your own psyche. You know what I'm saying? That drone is making you feel uncomfortable. It's making you think about your shit. You can't deal with it. You need to embrace that drone. Shit, shit gets a little dark when you listen to a lot of drones. Well, that, that's you. That's you. That's, <laughs> that's what you take it, right? That's what you take it. You're saying yeah. like some people are happy with drones. Yeah. I pet my cats listen to drone music. It's fine. Everybody feels good. Um, Everybody feels good. No, now, you know what? The Harvester Did came you... out in 68 uh, from Love Records, yeah. which is a small, like, Swedish record label. Uh, no, Finnish, actually. I, I lied to you guys. I uh, misspoke. Uh, whichever the, the government says is okay these days. <laughs> um, now, uh, what did you think about to me, what made this uh, album so great was the instrumentation. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting... Uh, they deal in a certain palette that feels very earthy. I think when, when I feel... When I talk about war, it just makes me feel like you're like trudging through mud. You know, it feels heavy. Well, and uh, The first track yeah. with, the, with, the, with the, uh, the horns, it hit so hard, right? Well, it's actually, like, the... the uh, yeah, if, if you heard if you heard the album as as the instructions uh, for smoking, if you got them, go. You got to listen to the record and then come back and listen to us. Uh, the birds, as the outro of the first track, is a really stand out because it originally I was like, oh, this is going to be a pleasant journey, and I realized that the birds are the only thing left because you're walking into the darkness in a good way, in a good way. It's a good journey, but it's definitely a, a picture of the time. Say that again. They're above. They're above the prey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this the thing is, uh, when you, when I saw the the album cover, which is also important, folks. If you're gonna make good music, you need to have cool album covers. There's a reason for everything. Right? Also, fuck you if you make a cool album cover and your music sucks. Okay? <laughs> you tricked me before. Okay, it's not. It's not right. You can't. You can't. You can't have, like, an International Harvester album and then, like, you sound like some fucking, like, the worst ELO album of all time. You uh, know what I'm saying? Uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not good, folks. It's, it's not good. It's not good. But, but talk a little bit about the artwork because uh, it, it reminds me of, uh, of the wink, wink, nudge, nudge of the people that go into avant-garde music, right? It's uh, like the cover of Throbbing Gristle's Greatest Hits, just even calling it a Greatest Hits. Oh. You know? Well, it's interesting because, like, obviously, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't speak any Swedish, right? right. So I had no idea what what it meant, right? Right? Like, and I saw the song, the, the song of God, and I was like, are they talking about the Soviet government? Because it's got the red and the fucking flames, and like, yeah. obviously, when the track I'm talking about Ho Chi Minh, which and we'll I, get so to. I know these guys were like super communist at the time. Yeah. You know, um, so. Uh, wrong, Jeremiah. You're stupid. It means sleep tight, Rosemary. There you go. So, okay. Wrong again. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll learn together, folks. We'll yeah. Learn together. I didn't, uh, for the for the first time, I didn't really look uh, up a lot of information on the album because I wanted to, like, uh, you know, be fresh about it. And, and um, one of the things that uh, it reminded me, like, you know, thinking about it, it's 1968. So let's put it in context real quick. The rest of the world is uh, Rolling Stones and uh, Peace and Love. And this feels like a bunch of guys uh, in, in a room, a bunch of people in a room that did not want to be Peace and Love. Peace and Love was everywhere. John Sebastian is singing their tunes. Don McLean's doing his thing. We are talking about whatever it is we're talking about. And uh, and it really stands out because you can hear you can hear 1968 in the album. You know, you can hear Electric Flag, but at the same time, there are bits and pieces that remind me of even the Pixies. You know, this album covers it all. Yeah, you listen to the future, folks. When you hear this, this is Krautrock before Krautrock. It really is. Yeah. I mean, there's some, especially the longer sort of rock tracks, it sounds like a lot of cool bands uh, in four years. Yeah, you know, they're they're really uh, they're really oh, far they're really far ahead. And and you know because this is the first episode of Smoke Up If You Got Them, uh, that's the whole point of this thing. We're going to be discovering the records that nobody really talks about because uh, we've talked about this before. 
Rush, Pink Floyd, that's not prog rock. It's that, not prog rock, that, folks. Super and Tramp is not prog rock. You've Jack been Jack sold a bill rock. of goods that is just crap. Don't believe the that's hype. classic rock. Yeah. That's just right next to one took over line, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that music, but it's not progressive rock music at all. Um, what was your favorite track? So on this? the the first my the first track that really stood out to me, and I texted you the moment that it happened was Ho Chi Ming, because uh, not only the name of it really just got over with me, but the fact that uh, you can hear the the protest and the history in just the rep the repetitive pattern of Ho Chi Ming over war drums going off you know I, I don't know if it's a hurdy-gurdy but it's a hurdy-gurdy style instrument carrying the the Viking drone over these like relentless war drums that are just perfect this is um it's it, it's weird to say it's classic Parsons sound but it's Parsons sound it's a statement you know, what's interesting, to me, probably my favorite track would have been uh, I Mourn You, which is uh, yeah. track one from uh, side two. Mm-hmm. First really long song. But but we haven't uh, gotten to one. we haven't gotten to the B side though. So what's your favorite track on side on the first side? <sighs> Probably um, uh, it's getting late now. There you go. Which is the which is like the the one like right before like the end. Yeah. Of side one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I really like I dig that one. The only thing I would say, like, and this is like super nitpicky, is the last two two songs are very long, and they put them back to back. Yeah. And I think again, I think the first long song is their best song, right? Uh, but I think probably the next long song is maybe the the weakest song. Right. So I wouldn't really put put it there or put them next. You know, back to back. But I, everything else is like a perfect, perfect album. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a good narrative with the way that the songs are are put together. I, I did wonder why I put one, you know, those back to back. I, maybe they just had to cut the record at that point because records had a certain amount of time in '68. So, uh, but we should definitely go to the B side now, and get this popping once again and smoke if you got them, and uh, and we'll be uh, right back. And we're back. And we're back. Smoke them if you got them, folks. We're listening to National Harvester. International, International Harvester. Harvester. International, International Harvester. Harvester. There you go. This is what happens, folks. When you smoke them, you got them. Sometimes it, that, uh, those words get tricky, don't they? It happened. Easy for me to say. International Harvester 1968. The record name, you can figure it out the way that we Doc figured it out. Rosemary. There you go. Which, which means we learned uh, the last break. Sleep. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Well, sleep, sleep sweet. Tight. There you go. Sleep tight. Sweet or tight. Same sleep, difference. Sleep tight. Sleep tight, Rosemary. Well, actually, you know what? You, you last time, uh, was we were getting out to, to, to flip it over and light up another one, uh, you said that uh, the track that uh, most jumped out was uh, the, the first track off of the B-side. So that's a great place Correct. to jump off. So you want to talk about it a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mourn, I mourn you. Getting back to what we were sort of talking about, it, to me, this is like the future of music because this is pre-Stooges. We haven't talked about the Stooges. Yeah, yeah. Because this has, this has that rock, honestly, like that, that very few bands had. It has such a deep, time. raw, uh, animalistic, primal rock and roll vibe to it. You know, I get, which is interesting again because the classical guys and also the drummer. We haven't uh, really talked about this, but the drummer himself, every, not not like the the flashiest drummer, no. but one the sounds of the drums are incredible, yes. impeccable, and how they recorded was really good too. I mean, the sound it was like one of the laid back songs on side one. Like I remember there was a uh, sound of just the ride cymbals, sounded yeah. really crisp. Yeah. Well, and the, uh, the, sa- the same deal with all the, uh, I mean, it. listen, this record is a love letter to the Velvet Underground and the New York Sound for sure, because 
and the drone, the not the drone, but the drums uh, remind me of, of Maureen Tucker. It's just it's just Mo Tucker, you know. It's deep sound. It's much better quality. Uh, yeah. Because these guys, these guys are guys that can sit in the studio and like work out the sound. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole point here. This is a sonic postcard, and uh, yeah, Stooges is a great place. It's a great band to reference there. You know, I I, I bet you that if we look around, uh, Iggy Pop has definitely talked about this. To some extent, especially him being a drummer. But again, when I say this, like I said, folks, uh, it's only some reference because, again, the Stooges, but the Stooges don't have a violin and a cello and a horn. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, like <laughs> your band does. But they're really giving you that same vibe, though. Yeah, it's incredible. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and not only that, they're like, this band covers everything, right? There, there's samples, there's a mixture oh. of, of all the genres. There is studio, like, s- savagery, because it really is. I mean, we're talking about uh, pushing further than the usual time for 1968. Also, consider this, folks. There's a limited amount of tracks. This is not like today that we can just keep going minutes, and going and going. 48 minutes. Correct. 24 minutes of five, folks. Yeah, so, and sometimes it wasn't up to you where that was going to be cut. So, this, uh, this... I think you could go, honestly, I think there were, I think... You could go 26 aside, uh, and, and then it started like you could do more, but it really nice to sound like you know, like those old okay tell records and all that. That's like, that's bass, when blah, you blah, start, blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah. Abco, Abco, uh, I mean, it still has to do with this because these guys were definitely influenced by the Stones to some extent. Uh, Abco found a way to make cheaper uh, reproductions uh, at the sacrifice of the sound, so it gives you a flimsy vinyl. Um, which is not as good. No more. No. No. Not. No much deafness and loudness in uh, in the record, but somehow these guys uh, get it. They they just got it all through. This is one of uh, Thurston Moore's favorite album. Um, I do know that because I saw this album before I heard it, and uh, until Jeremiah sent it over my way and said, "Hey, we're doing this. Uh, we're doing Smoke if you got him." Uh, you know, I hadn't really paid attention to it, so you know, it's. It's worth it's worth the listen. All the people that matter with good taste talk about it, and you should listen to it as well. Yeah, there's four available right now on uh, Discogs, and the, the cheapest one is like two hundred bucks US. And these are and these Russia. are original pressings, or are these repressings? Oh yeah, 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 original pressings. Yeah. There you go, two hundred bucks, folks. Go get them, and uh, and give them to your favorite Somebody. podcasters. Yeah, send them to yeah, your favorite exactly. podcast. We we showed um, you the way. We're gonna build this my collection through, through just love and appreciation of all these fans. There you go. Uh, um, we we have to we have so, to put up a picture of uh, of your uh, collection of records, so the people listen to this uh, um, know that this is no joke, no joke. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so well, folks, um, we're, we're we're getting to the wrap up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we yeah. want to say uh, we want to say thank you. Uh, we want to say come back. Uh, don't be a weak person. Tomorrow. So come come and join us tomorrow. We're going to be doing this. is This is a challenge. We're here to share the knowledge. Uh, old school is fucking cool. So join us in uh, Smoke It if you got them. Uh, you can hear this via Apple iTunes. You can hear us through Podbean. You can hear us through Google. You can hear us through every single provider. And uh, there's going to be a link on Facebook and Instagram and all that shit. So check us out tomorrow for another episode of... Look what you got him.